Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Keith Silva, in for Fran Stoddard. The UVM Extension Center for Sustainable Agriculture was founded in 1994 to conduct research and outreach to help Vermont move forward as a leader in sustainable agriculture practices. 30 years ago, for example, grazing cattle for milk and meat was an infrequent practice, and no one was talking about climate change in any informed or meaningful or practical way. Now the research taking place at the Center for Sustainable Agriculture on grazing, climate change, and water quality is central to these discussions in Vermont and nationwide. We're going to talk about those topics and the state of sustainable agriculture with Joshua Faulkner, the UVM Center for Sustainable Agriculture's Farming and Climate Change Program Coordinator, and recently named the Interim Director. Thanks for talking with us today, Joshua. Morning, Keith. Really good to be with you. Um, we profiled your work and the work of your colleagues at the Center for Sustainable Ag many times, but remind us of the center's mission and goals. Yeah, great, great question. So, you know, put simply, the mission of the Center for Sustainable Ag is to elevate and advance sustainable agriculture um, in the state of Vermont, but really with an eye on all three legs of the sustainability stool. So economic sustainability, environmental sustainability, sustainability and social sustainability. Um, you know, we've been, the center has been doing this work for over 25 years. Um, and, and our goal is to ultimately, you know, make Vermont really the leader of sustainable agriculture um, in the state of Vermont. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, in the country. In the country, <laughs> right, right. And in Vermont, it, 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 it's all good. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Joshua, I've heard this term regenerative agriculture come up on across the fence with different guests and ag leaders and researchers in the last few months. What's the difference between sustainable agriculture and regenerative agriculture? And what does it mean outside of an academic setting for folks like yourself and your colleagues? Yeah, that's that's quite the buzz, buzz term right now. <laughs> um, so the, the, the way I think of it, sustainable agriculture is really you know, farming, if we apply it to farming, farming in a way that we're, we're not using any of our resources at a faster rate than, than we're replacing them, mm -hmm. right? So, so we're not taking anything away. Um, and then regenerative is similar, except with regenerative agriculture, the idea is we would actually be adding something back, not only not taking away, but, but adding something back and building our resources. So, um, <clears throat> the, the, I think the area where this first um, kind of came into came into kind of common usage was related to sustainable agriculture and climate change mitigation, with, with the idea being that farms, through adding carbon to their soils, could become part of the solution to, to climate change, and and that's that's regenerative. Um, and now it's. You, you know, it's broadened right. in, in, in its definition and, and can apply to um, farms creating pollinator habitat, for mm -hmm. example. Okay. Um, any way that farms can um, produce ecosystem services and, and provide an added value to, to, to us, to society as a right. whole. Right. And regardless of the terminology, you've already brought it up, um, making sure that it is uh, economically sustainable is the whole point, right? Absolutely, you know. I mean, economically sustainable, environmentally sustainable, and then I got to I got to throw in that third leg of the sustainability right. stool. We want to make sure it's, you know, these practices they're regenerative. That they're also, um, you know, looking out for the livelihoods of farmers and farm workers. They're adding vibrancy to our communities, and and their the practices are generally equitable. Right. Right. Good point. Good point. Um, I was there with you last summer on a project that you were working on with a rainfall simulator measuring agricultural runoff. Any updates to this project? Yeah, so this is <laughs> climate change disrupts agriculture. It also disrupts um, agriculture research. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, we, we are really excited about this project, but we had tremendously dry conditions, as, as many of you know, many of your viewers know, in, in most of Vermont this year. So we couldn't do this in Addison County. And then we actually had really wet conditions um, up in Alberg where our other field site is. Um, so um, we weren't able to do what we wanted to do this year, but we're, we're raring to go come next spring. Um, we're gonna get that, that unit back out there um, and start with first cut manure application after first cut. And we're really excited. We're gonna add a measurement of greenhouse gas emissions from the soils 
in those rainfall simulator plots with the work next year. So are you talking about gases that are released when a rainfall event occurs? Is that what you're stu you'll study? That's right. That, that added moisture with the manure that was just applied um, could potentially result in a, in a burst of, of gaseous emissions. Hmm. So we want to we wanna try to capture that and measure that um, with, this, with this simulator tool. Now, I know uh, climate change is your specialty, Joshua, but there's lots of research projects that go on at the center. Um, talk about the grazing that projects that you and your colleagues are working yeah. on and how it now connects to food systems. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, in the center, we just we're, we have a real powerhouse team of, of folks working on grazing. We have Mary Ellen Franklin, who's, who's working with the Dairy Grazing Apprenticeship Program in Vermont. We have um, Kelsey Meehan working on on sustainability and, and business sustainability of, of some of our small grazing farms or small ruminant farms. And then Amber Reed, who's working um, on water quality practices, you know, helping farmers adopt and um, practices that are gonna benefit water quality. Um, Juan Alves, who's doing a lot of forage management and, and soil health research. And then Andrew May, who's coordinating all those activities into a really impactful program. Um, so, so we're very excited about, about the grazing work that's going on. I, I think it's really our bread and butter in the center. Now, Joshua, if we were talking 10 years ago about the Center for Sustainable Agriculture, we'd be talking about a different kind of grazing. We'd be focused on the technical side of things. And you're always going to be there to help farmers on the technical side of things. You mentioned Juan's work on grazing and soil. How is the Center trying to connect to bigger issues like with community and again, those food systems, how food, you know, almost distribution, how food systems work. Yeah, this is a, a really exciting area of conversation for us. You know, we have our we have our technical assistance work, but we we really want to move into out, outside of the farm gate um, and start to to understand how extension can play more of a role in um, building food net local food networks um, and what. What role can Vermont play in, in the northeastern, um, the greater northeastern food system, um, contributing to sustainable diets and, and doing applied research in that area? So, so we're really excited about, about, you know, trying to be part of all this, this activity at UVM centered on food systems and, and being the go-to partner for applied research and extension in that area. And that also gets into the equity as well, making sure that it's equal for everyone, that no one's being left out, correct? That, that's absolutely right. Yeah. That's a huge piece of it. Yep. Um, one project that you and your colleagues are working on involving dairy feed and net zero carbon emissions. Talk about this project. This was interesting when we were talking about this before. Yeah, I'm really excited about this one, Keith. Um, so this, the idea with this project is to um, understand if we can, uh, if a dairy farm can really become net zero in terms of their carbon emissions um, for their feed production. So by that, I mean, can a, can, a, can a farm that's growing corn silage, for example, store as much carbon in their soils as they emit during the process of growing that, that corn or that, that hay, whatever, it, you know, we're doing work in both settings. Um, you know, in order to do that, we're gonna be measuring a whole bunch of things on, on, a, on a few fields. You know, deep soil carbon, soil health, water quality from the surface and subsurface. We're going to be looking at gas emissions from the from the soils in a really intensive way um, on some fields. So this is a this is a really exciting project. It's a five or um, actually a six year project. Mm. And one of the things is it's the the emissions are trying to track of like, you know, one of the issues that farmers have had this year a lot is gas prices, fuel costs, all those things. And this also gets to that to see how much is being spent versus how much is being, you know, you know, carbon, you know, sequestration or whatever. Correct. That's kind of what we're talking about. Yeah, it wraps that up, too. That's right. that's part of the emissions on for growing crops. And then then we have those other emissions, the carbon dioxide that actually comes up out of the soil as as mm -hmm. it's tilled and as manure is applied. So it's 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 considering both of those. Right. If you're just joining us, I'm talking with Joshua Faulkner, the climate change and uh, uh, at the climate change professional at the Center for Sustainable Agriculture. You've been the coordinator now for nine years, Joshua, you told me. Um, what do you think has changed in those nine years when you started to now? Wow. Yeah, nine years. Yeah, sorry, That's big question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, 
you know, uh, I would say generally what, what I've seen change is um, a, a, just an acceptance across um, the, the farms and farmers of the realities of climate change. Mm. And, and, you know, that's, that's really encouraging. It shouldn't be surprising, though, because I think farms deal with and feel the effects of climate change much more so than than us in the general public do. Um, and they've that, they, they, you know, they've 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 kind of swallowed that and they're and they're adapting and they're trying to build more resilient systems. And, and, and that's really encouraging. Yeah. What practices do you think have gained the most traction? Oh, oh far and away, I, I would say. Farmers um, using practices that build soil health on their farm. You know, they've really, they really doubled down on these practices. And, and that, you know, that's beef farms, vegetable farms, dairy farms. They're all recognize the benefits of soil health, you know, during drought years, during extreme storms, when we have, you know, just buckets and buckets of rain falling. Soil health is, is really a powerful resilience tool for, for all of our farms. Um, what a lot of time, you know, the time I've spent with you out in the field, it's always been in the summertime, but it's not like you go into hibernation in the winter. You said winter is uh, sometimes even just as busy as the summer. I, I, I would actually say winter um, is, is, is busier than the summer <laughs> in, in many ways. Um, you know, if you think about Vermont and we have, you know, lots of snow on the ground, we have rain events, we have January thaws. Um, that's when a lot of runoff happens um, in Vermont because their soils are frozen. They're, if you can kind of think of them like a parking lot, if they're frozen in January and we have a thaw, all that snow runs off, all the, that warm rain in, in February runs off. So we're, we're out there trying to catch that and, and measure it. Excellent. To learn more about the research projects and programs and services happening at UVM Center for Sustainable Agriculture, you can go to their website, uvm.edu slash sustainable agriculture to find out more about these projects and to maybe find out how to get involved in some of the research studies that Joshua does. I know he always likes to work with people who are ready to uh, work with him. So right. um, I want to thank our partners here at WCAX for making today's program possible. And I always thank you for stopping by Across the Fence.